Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. I am Shane Thomas, you can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. And today we're going to be going over the sub-user module and we're actually picking up where we left off last time. So if you remember in the last video we walked through what the sub-user module was and what it could do. But you'll also remember we ran into one little problem or bug that we were going to go ahead and look under the hood at the module and try to fix on our own. In, as I mentioned in the last video, this there is a fix out on Drupal.org. There is a patch. So you can, of course, come out and use this. But when I originally looked at it, I just went ahead and fixed it myself because I knew it was something very simple. And so I'm going to show you how I went through that process. So in the future, if there is a problem with a module, maybe you'll be able to look at it and figure out the fix for yourself rather than uh, just hoping that there's a I issue or a fix out on Drupal.org. You should always start looking on Drupal.org, of course, because then you don't have to do it yourself. But a lot of times you might run into something where you can't find the same problem or same bug. So having the skills to fix it yourself is very useful. So let's go ahead and look at the problem again, and then we'll go ahead and open up the module file and take a quick look. So if you remember, when we create the sub-user with our manager role, and I'll go ahead and log in here as the manager. If we go into our account and go to sub-users and click the add user link, we do not see an option for a role. And if you remember, we set the permissions so they should be able to see the reviewer role and the authenticated user role. If you edit the user, however, after you've created it, you do see the roles. So we need to figure out why the roles show up correctly here, but do not show up when you're just adding a new user. Because we want to make sure when we're adding a new user, we can, we can also select the roles. So the first thing you're going to do if you're going to fix this on your own is you're going to open up the module file and try to uh, take a look at it. And in this case, it's actually a very simple fix. Since you know it already works in one of the two forms, you can use uh, the one form to kind of give you an idea of how to make the other form work. So let's go ahead and open up the module here. So I have, we'll actually take a look at everything in the module. Okay, so here's the sub-user module. These are all the files that are in the sub-user module. You can see there's the sub-user UI, which is a sub-module inside of the sub-user module. There's also a, the switch module. So there's sub-user switch. And here's the actual sub-user module itself. You'll notice there's only four files here that are uh, of actual importance to the module. The README and License, of course, are just informational. So if you are, aren't familiar with module development, we can start by looking at the info file. This just lists a little bit of project information about the actual module, such as dependencies, where it should show up on the module administration page, what the name of it is, that type of information. But the important one here is the dot module file and that's what we're going to be looking at. The install one is anytime you turn on actually enable the module it runs through an install process. Not all modules are going to have this but the majority of them probably will. And this dot relation type default that actually is integration with the relation module and we're not going to worry about that either. Our problem is going to be in the sub user module. So if we just scroll through this really quickly you'll notice there's about 350 lines in this module so it's not too large of a module so it's a good one to really kind of take a look at if you're not familiar with Drupal development. So we're going to walk through some of these major sections until we get to the part where we're actually looking at the form itself. This first one, this first function here is a PHP function. It's a Drupal hook which means you are actually hooking into uh, the Drupal API. So Drupal is going to know that you want to define, in this case, permissions. So these are all of the permissions 
that are part of the subuser module. So if we went to the permissions page, we would see administer subusers, view subusers, edit, delete, override, and also then it does a loop and it will create create a blank. So create a authenticated user, create a manager, create a reviewer in our case. So if you watch that past video, you'll see all these. Hook menu allows you to define a menu item or in this case just a path. So when you click that link to create a new user or add a user, it will go ahead and load the correct form. Hook menu alter. All this one's doing in this case is it's going to existing, already existing paths and changing the access. So in this case it's opening up access in some cases for our user to create sub-users when typically they would not have that access. This integrates in with the Profile 2 module. We're not going to worry about that. This one just checks access if they have access to create. This one looks like it checks if they have edit access to actually edit the user or the sub-user. This one will check if they have access to delete the sub-user and access to view. So we'll get through that. We're going to skip through that one and we're going to get down to what's really important here and what we're really looking for. Hook form alter. Now th what this allows you to do is it allows you to actually alter a an existing Drupal form. So and you're going to need some familiarity with PHP obviously to follow along. So if you if you don't have that, just try to stick with us. You might be able to pick up some things and see what we're kind of looking at here. But subuser form alter is going to allow us to alter an existing form. So here it's looking at it's looking at the form ID and it's going to look at the user account form and user profile form. And it's going to do some things in here. It's also then going to look at the user register form. So if you want to know the the user account form and user profile form, this is what you're going to see, and we can actually just do this. So let's just go ahead and this is just a little debug statement. So we're going to print the form ID at the top of the page. Then we're going to go ahead and come back to our manager, and we're going to refresh. You can see right now I'm on the user register form. So this is when I'm creating a new user. This is the user register form. If I go into sub users and I go to edit, you can see this is the user profile form. So they're different forms. And that's why in one I can see the roles and the other I can't. You can also get this, the form ID by looking in a developer tools. And you can see if you find this hidden input, it should say form ID user profile form. So you'll also be able to find it that way, but sometimes it's just easier just to print it out. So let's go ahead and go back into our code here. And we're going to look at, so the user profile form we know is working. So something that gets done in here also probably needs to be done here, but isn't currently being done. So if we walk through this, this one's this if statement's basically going to look to see if an account is set, or if it's not set, it's just going to go ahead and just get out of it. It's just going to return. It's going to get the current account that you are going to be creating, or in this case, you're going to be editing. And this is the important piece right here. So let's walk through this. So first, it makes it checks if you don't currently have access to the roles, which in our case, we, the manager d does not by default have access to change roles. So this is going to evaluate to true, which means it's going to come inside this if statement and go through this code here. It's going to load all of the parents for the current sub-user and check if, basically, if this is if the user currently has access to edit sub-users. 
If they do, then it's going to allow you to loop through the roles and only show the actual roles that we selected based on the permissions. So if you go back to the permissions page, let's go ahead and go back here. We'll go into the permissions page and look at the sub user permissions. You'll notice there's authenticated user checked and a reviewer checked. So those are the only roles that show up. Administrator and manager roles do not show up because we only have permissions for those roles. So what this loop is doing is it's going to loop through and only show the roles based on what you selected for those permissions. So what happens is you check if the user has access to create the sub user with that specific role if they don't, you're going to just remove it. So what's actually happening is it's going through and it's removing administrator and it's removing a manager from the list of available role options. And we're going to look through that here in a second and see that in a little bit more detail. But the first thing we want to do is we basically want to do this same thing down here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to paste this in. And this isn't actually going to work just like this. There's some differences, but we're going to take a look at it. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And we will come back in here. We'll actually go to our manager. And we will go to add user. And you'll see we now see some errors. So let's go back in the code. It says undefined variable account. Let's go back in the code and figure out why. Well, you can see in this case, we are trying to use this variable account, which does not exist. Here, we actually, in the user profile form, we actually create it, so it doesn't exist here. In all actuality, this is only used when you're editing to look at the parents of the user and see if you have access to actually edit. Since we're not editing, since we're actually creating, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this. And we're going to save it. We will come back in here. And you'll notice now it's working. You might not understand why it's working, but we're going to cover it in just a second. But just keep in mind it is working. We're going to give it a quick test. And we'll give this user the reviewer role. It says I created a new account. Let's go ahead and check. And you'll see I have reviewer 5 here, and it does have the reviewer role. So there you go. It's working. Now let's actually find out why it worked. Because my guess is at this point you probably don't quite understand what that code's doing. So let's look into it a little more. So I'm back on the create page. You can see the roles are showing up just as we expected. If I went into the permissions as an admin, I could of course add or remove these roles so they would have different options. They could create different kinds of users. If you look inside this code, we're going to go through line by line quickly and see what it's doing. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the form variable. And using the develop module, you can go ahead and use DPM to debug this. It's a little more helpful than just a print statement. So if we refresh the page, you can see I can now dig into this form variable. So if I click on here, you can see these are all of the elements inside this form. And if we want to take a look at what it's doing, it's looking for, it's going to check if account roles access is not, if you don't have access. So in, in the case that the user does not have access, so let's look at that and let's find that. So account roles access, you can see it's false. So in this case, since it's 
not not false it's going to go ahead and be true and it's going to come into here so it's going to loop through the form account roles options so if we come back form account roles options you can see there's three options administrator manager and reviewer which those are the three roles it doesn't show authenticated that one's going to be there by default but administrator manager and reviewer but in this case we don't want the user to be able to see those roles we only want them to see the reviewer role that's the only role we want them to be able to assign so let's figure out how that works so in this next section this next statement here it says if the user does not have access to create the sub user of this RID which let's figure out what that RID is going to be it's going to be this number right here so if it can't create a role ID of 3, a role ID of 4, a role ID of 5, then what it's going to do is it's going to unset at this, which basically means it's going to remove this option. So let's go ahead and come down here, try this. And then let's look at this real quick. This what this one's doing is you can you notice that here it says it's going to check to see if they have access here it's going to say let's see how many options are left after we removed them all if they have more than zero options this is going to be then set to true so then the user is going to see that role field so as long as there's options remaining the user is going to go ahead and be able to see that that actual roles checkboxes or those role checkboxes so let's save this and go back if we refresh we should see two here so this is before we run the code and this is after so before if we go in we go into account roles options you see we have three options after we only have one option for reviewer and so that's how it actually pulls in the roles that you would normally see when creating a user it actually starts with all of the items and then it goes through and based on the permissions it'll check and remove all of them but the ones that this user has access to see so that's kind of a, an idea I know we you might not understand exactly what's happening but hopefully it got you a little more comfortable looking inside of a module if you are looking to learn more about module development I have a module development series or Code Karate has one on CodeKarate.com go ahead and click over here in the left section and find module development basics and it actually goes from the bottom up I believe but you can start there and it's a seven part series and that'll walk you through some of the basics of developing a Drupal 7 module if you haven't already get your free Code Karate sticker make sure to check out all the other stuff like the ebook uh, the Drupal Commerce course and all the other content on CodeKarate.com. If you have anything else you want us to cover in the future, make sure to let us know. Again, follow me on Twitter at smthomas3, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.